Hi, it's Eric and welcome to our video conversation this week. I began on Monday this week having a healthcare roundtable with a lot of Minnesota hospitals and healthcare organizations talking about the state of Medicare so we can protect and preserve it, but focusing on over-regulation and some of the onerous regulations that hospitals have to deal with in particular. Um, and looking at future opportunities with chronic care management so we can protect and preserve Social Security and save a lot of money because of some government red tape that can be eliminated. Now we're going to get on to our questions though and the first actually is an email that comes in from Tim and Champlin. And Tim writes in saying, Dear Congressman Paulson, thank you for co-sponsoring House Concurrent Resolution 75 regarding genocide against Christians and other vulnerable minorities in Iraq and Syria. I look forward to it moving quickly from committee. Thank you for your support, Tim. Actually, Tim, thanks for sharing your thoughts. And unfortunately, those images of, of ISIS and the activities in the Middle East of uh, destroying religious sites throughout the Middle East and beheading individuals, targeting individuals based on their religious beliefs uh, has been all too common in that area of the world. In fact, uh, it was not too long ago, about a year ago, when the ethnic minority group, the Yazidis, were forced out of Iraq to seek refuge. And we've seen Christians beheaded as well. And so the House took action this week on that resolution that I supported and passed unanimously, making sure that we will categorize the Islamic State's actions as genocide, as crimes against humanity, and war crimes, which is critical uh, in incorporating our, the United States with its allies in uh, drawing more attention to these atrocities. Next up is an email that also comes in from Patricia in Wyzetta. And she writes in saying, Representative Paulson, I'm glad that the House will vote on whether to file an amicus brief with the Supreme Court. I hope you will support this effort to assert the authority of Congress to write our nation's laws. Sincerely, Patricia. Well, Patricia, as you point out, there's been a lot of executive orders that have come forward from this president and the administration, and often it's been criticized, they've been criticized as usurping the authority of Congress because Congress writes the laws and the administration of the president executes them. Well, recently the Supreme Court pretty much asked and encouraged Congress to weigh in on a court case that's moving through the Supreme Court. And so Congress took a vote this week and did acknowledge through that vote that yes, it is Congress that writes the laws and the president follows and executes those laws. And now the court is expected to rule sometime in the next few months on the interpretation of that law. And so if it's really the first time in history that this actually has taken place and so we'll be waiting for that court action. I want to thank everyone that took the time to join in with your thoughts, your comments, your ideas, and your questions. Continue to reach out anytime at paulson.house.gov. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Have a great weekend and week.